Um, uh, hi, I'm Leo. Um, I work at Salesforce as a senior product manager. Um, I am currently the product uh, manager for uh, standards and web platform at Salesforce and also for the LWC team, the Lightning Web Components Framework. And uh, um, most of the time when I talk about it, it's always a, a love letter for the open web. Um, well, trying to introduce like where we are at Salesforce. Um, uh, the Lightning Web Components Framework was introduced over three years ago, even more than that. And uh, today at Salesforce, Within the platform, we have over 22 million uh, LWC components created. And, uh, but why we did that? Uh, mostly because we have, uh, we always like been investing in the web, in the open web, and using open web technologies. So the Lightning Web Components is mostly using uh, standards web components with a little bit of flavor uh, on top. And uh, we know that using uh, web standards, we can take advantage in uh, having like a better produ productivity and mostly uh, having all the like anyone who does have experience with JavaScript will else like be, uh, have an easier time coming in and uh, understand like how to develop for Salesforce. And it's compatible and it's easy to use and it's the way we should do things on, on the web. And uh, because of that, we should always be working with the web platform and never against it, not trying to reinvent any wheel. It's more on um, embracing it and making sure where we are and how we can contribute. So in this uh, same energy, we want to push the web forward, uh, of course, for our Salesforce customers and the users. But we know when we do this, we also like pushing the web, uh, open web forward. Uh, and that's because we do this together. Uh, today, Salesforce has been active, actively participating in different standards uh, committees and bodies. Uh, we have participation in TC39, W3C, Wattwig, and uh, we've been um, reaching uh, like uh, browser implementers as well. And but how we do that and why we do that, this is what I'm gonna try to address here. And this is the summary of all of this. Um, this is the work that we do today on, our, on the standards and web platform team. And uh, that four different fronts of it, where I'm going to be talking about addressing the browser breaking changes, uh, but also tracking the browser bugs, and uh, testing early for responsible mig migration as standards become recommendations. And, uh, but also at the end, driving Salesforce innovation into the web platform. Um, they're all connected. Uh, let's start with the browser breaking changes. Um, and I'm gonna, uh, all of these, I'm gonna give you examples here of what we have today. Uh, what do we talk about browser breaking changes? I'm not sure if many of you have been aware recently, um, a new version of uh, Chrome was uh, released following a new change that happened in Wattwig's uh, HTML, where alert, prompt, and confirm in uh, cross-origin um, iframes. And uh, that uh, got us like by surprise, which was not ideal. We got like in the same week over 400 cases and uh, issues reported by, by over 1,000 customers uh, of Salesforce. So how do you actually prevent that from happening and how do you actually address that when, when it happens? Um, we had to act quickly and effective, like with a migration plan from LWC, uh, where usages of a window alert could be just replaced with one, one of our components and uh, having to drive that ahead. Um, basically, we had a quick change on, like, we had a uh, UI thing. And with that, we also had to do education cross-platform, not only our teams, but also our customers who use the Salesforce platform to develop on top of that and uh, what they could do 
to also get uh, up to speed with what was happening. The same, uh, the same bug at the same time uh, required us to reach out to, to Chrome and also to the other browser implementers to explain that, hey, this is happening, please don't, don't break us right now. So like we rolled back, we set up a plan, and there is always a, um, um, a contract, like a verbal contract with us uh, to, to make sure we're responsible enough to address this and give them a deadline of when this is going to happen, to also not hold uh, the web from becoming modern. And uh, similar things happen when we had uh, another change. In a, an, a specific accessibility feature was released <laughs> and enabled in Chromium 96. And uh, like basic flaws uh, for us, such as tab switching, um, moved like from just a sub-second to over six seconds. Um, that was a huge impact for us. And that's the same time like where my team, we try to identify who are our experts and uh, we, ca we can connect from uh, the other side. In this case, we also had a, a problem coming in from Chromium on a big impact. And we had a big back and forth with engineers on both sides. I quite don't remember the name, but they both had the same names. Their emails, like the email thread was kind of interesting because they had the same name. So I always thought it was the same person, but uh, it, it worked nice in a way that like we had fixes and at the same time we, we provided like testing and testing in-house and using everything that we could test and report. And uh, it's, a, it's working in partnership. Um, in a way like to, to move things forward and not to disable anything. And with that, those are changes that might come in uh, as breaking changes. Sometimes we defend ourselves, such as we are doing this right now for document.domain or the browser version. I should actually have included the, the Slack version. I remember Mike Taylor, who is here, wrote a very interesting blog post where Slack was only going to be compatible with Firefox version 520 because <laughs> uh, versions coming in. And, uh, but yeah, sometimes we have actual browser bugs. Um, and uh, this is where we also have like a big track in here. I hear I'm only listing like uh, four issues that we are aware but of. Uh, um, we have a big tracking of list and how we work on that. And uh, I'm listing those here just out of curiosity. Um, these two, the, the first two here uh, were issues that we reported like from Salesforce where we had the CSS parts uh, coming in with like, so we have like part and host that were not working together. We were able to reach out to WebKit. We were able to do that. And that was a time we had only Chromium um, as the, the last browser to address it. And I remember like when I was working with Igalia, um, this one was pointed out like we just uh, uh, did a partnership with Igalia to get this one fixed. And uh, it looks like a small bug, it looks like a small detail, but that opens like a lot of doors for us to not just simply try workarounds. We don't want to go through workarounds. They, they're big and they last for long to the point they, they get stinky in our code. Um, same other works here. There are even like an issue here who is, uh, where it's too open. We are considering uh, getting this one on track right now. But most important, it's not only reporting these bugs, it's actually creating an internal culture uh, at Salesforce. That should happen in any enterprise um, where you should have a, uh, a culture of reporting, tracking, and describing impact. I've seen bugs for myself. Like I, I, I'm, my company is guilty of that. Like we, we have some bugs that are just reported and people forget to, to bring in a, a test case, something that can be feasible for, for, for the browser vendors and uh, something that can be used to understand like what is the impact of this. Uh, sometimes, this, uh, sometimes this is not translated. 
This is where our work comes in and try to um, help education inside, uh, saying like, hey, when you find a bug, just not, let's not go like just do a workaround, but let's uh, report that in the appropriate browsers that are actually uh, breaking this. Uh, we do work of tracking them and making sure uh, they, don't, they ju just don't stall, especially from our end. And uh, let's m make like some work to describe the impact and make sure like people know what is happening on that, uh, for us. And uh, it's been good so far. Still a lot of progress coming in here. And uh, this same culture leads us to get like testing early for responsible migration as standards become recommendations. Um, what is that? It's basically understanding not everything comes too fast when we have standards. Um, I have an example here of the mixed shadow mode. Um, when we got like LWC becoming released in 2017, we know like shadow down support in 2017 was not um, vast. We needed uh, more, uh, but we, we couldn't just like release uh, Lightning Web components using native shadow down by the time if we wanted to keep uh, compatibility. And by the time, we used a synthetic Shadow DOM uh, that we still have it today, but synthetic Shadow DOM is not exactly native. It's not exactly a polyfill. It's something that totally replaces, but we need to make a plan to get rid of that. Um, and please remember, by the time, like from 2017, a lot of things change or the plans for Shadow Dome also like change a little bit in the on the go. So we are creating a way that we can move to native Shadow Dome and creating a way that is smooth because when we have this impact in our um, Salesforce users, we need to make sure uh, it doesn't break everyone. But we know support today has been uh, way more interesting uh, so that um, feasible and uh, of course we are getting rid of like support for uh, the non-chromium edge in uh, IE11 and with that we hope to get like uh, more usage of native Shadow DOM. Uh, this is actually coming in as a opt-in for, for users um, using uh, Lightning Web components and uh, it's working so far. This just like we have a de developer prevail, and it's work that we need to do. But not everything is that smooth. That when standards work comes in again, um, we have some challenges uh, to keep this uh, compatible. By the time we created synthetic Shadow DOM, uh, we also created like accessib accessibility capabilities that are not available in native Shadow DOM. So today, a just like simple uh, migration from synthetic to native can mean compromise. We cannot afford uh, compromise in accessibility. That's when our work um, uh, comes again on like how we actually ship things that are missing for native Shadow DOM for us. Um, and we want web standard solutions. We, we don't want to just like try to reinvent the wheel or just pretend it's something else. Otherwise, we end up with another a V2 of synthetic Shadow DOM. We don't want that. And accessibility object model is not yet uh, available, not fully available. And this is a complex work, but it's very interesting. We are working with Igalia. Uh, guess who is the, the appropriate people? We don't, uh, we don't have browser implementers. Igalia comes in as like uh, the best solution that we have right now because we have ideas, we have our use cases, uh, but Igalia has uh, expertise. And uh, yeah, so we are working on uh, like addressing parts of the AOM that we want uh, to unblock native Shadow DOM. I know this is important for Salesforce, but it's also important like for anyone using web components. And that's where I say like we embrace the open web rather than just creating something against it. And it's going good so far. There are challenges, but like the pacing so far is, seems really good. Um, 
So when I said all of the three fronts, of course, we want to drive some innovation uh, into the web platform. And uh, here comes the uh, other example. Like if you know my work from TC39, and as was mentioned before, you know I've been involved with Shadow Realms. Um, for those who are not aware, it's a new way to evaluate uh, JavaScript in a synchronous uh, context. And it creates a new global um, of, and a new scope of execution. And it's lightweight. Uh, if you have to compare it with what you have available on the web today in synchronous communication, you only have iframes. Uh, but you cannot, uh, like, we don't need uh, many things from iframes, and there is a lot of things from iframes we, uh, that are deal breakers for, for us, such as uh, having, like, window top and window location. Uh, those are unforgeable values. You cannot change that. You cannot remove the, uh, those properties. And we need this because here's the business uh, model, like, trying to illustrate this. Uh, Salesforce is a platform for people to create things and uh, having developers using this platform in the, their most customized way. And uh, getting a quick example here, I roughly call Salesforce as an extensive web application. Uh, you can also imagine a browser IDE where you have like your uh, code editor, but also extensions and plugins. And uh, that means it's created by different components from different origins. And to give a, a better illustration of that, you can have like uh, in your platform, you can have like Salesforce components, uh, but also add that to custom components where uh, like uh, the developer, the user can create their own components, but they can also import components from our marketplace called the App Exchange. And uh, they can just take advantage on that. And by the time you have everything put together, you need to make sure this platform secure, uh, has still like their compatibility and integrity secured. And uh, when we talk about like we want to create something secure, we also talk about having integrity for all of this, making sure uh, they're not messing up with the global values, with the, the global built-ins. And uh, everything works in real time. Everything works as like one experience of actually building blocks from web components. But if they are from different origins, even if they are trust origins from, from Salesforce, uh, we need them to work well. That's why we have from uh, like beyond the uh, Lightning Web components, we also have a uh, Lightning Web security framework that is created in a, in a main brain system. And uh, today is being used on high frames, but we are already ready to use Shadow Realms. And uh, guess what? We are partner uh, we, who do we have partnership with to implement this? Uh, if you guess Igalia, you're correct. Um, and it's been a very nice work so far. We have this now implemented in WebKit, and uh, it's available on Safari Technology Preville. There are some uh, uh, ends that we are fixing here and there, or such on, as a HTML integration, which is a extensive part, but I, I think it's uh, close to be done. Uh, we have some tracking on uh, Chrome here, but by the time I created these slides, uh, since then, Firefox has been involved a lot on the implementation of it as well. There is also an implementation uh, currently both on Deno and Node.js on the integration of that. Um, it's been very interesting. Why is it interesting? Because I was betting on this. I have rough tests, already tests, uh, just by using Safari technology preview, and just by comparing what we have, I, I ran some quick tests and uh, also observing all the objects creation. Uh, if I was comparing iframes, uh, simple iframes initialization comparing to Shadow Realms initialization with the minimum initialization we do for DOM virtualization, uh, we were getting like speeds up to 13 times faster. Um, but if we run the main brains framework on top of it, 
we were observing eight times faster. And that's all because of the memory footprint. And in the spirit of pushing the web forward, uh, this is going to become a reality very soon for us, and we're going to be able to get rid of iframes entirely because we finally announced our end of support for A11. I feel so relieved about this. <laughs> uh, who doesn't? Um, yeah, uh, as I say, this is a love uh, letter for the open web in a way I hope like other uh, enterprise companies who are not browser implementers, they understand their, how, uh, where they are uh, in, in the open web. It's not because like, we are not browser implementers, we should not like, um, also do our contributions to move the open web forward. Uh, we are part of the open web. This is our platform as well. Um, so it's also our responsibility to, to be part of this. And with that, uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, no workarounds, it's not exactly a policy, it's a, it's a goal. So uh, when we have workarounds, we, we try our best to make sure we, uh, they, have a, they have some deadline. And the deadline is actually going through the standards API. Uh, so this is mostly like not trying to reinvent, uh, reinvent uh, the wheel, but actually being able to observe what is coming in for the web uh, and uh, trying to make sure like we're using polyfills or things that will reflect what the web has. There is always the, um, the risk as like we adopted, uh, we are early adopters of decorators. Um, we, uh, it's our responsibility to deal with it today but it's still like we are betting on something that will come to the web, not trying to reinvent um, in our way to adapt, like we did with Synthetic Shadow DOM, and today we are migrating to it. And we are able to map and identify what are the missing features uh, to let us enable native Shadow DOM. I agree. <laughs> well, they avoid uh, unexpected side effects like low balloons to explosion. That said, the current uh, design still allows call uh, callable boundaries. Do you think this is still not the ideal and that people can somehow escape the uh, shadow realm? Um, I don't see exactly how to escape the, the shadow realms. Uh, it, I, I think one of the things that was intended when we created uh, Shadow Realms, um, we, we first like just uh, referred to, to the proposal as the realms uh, themselves, where you could actually transfer objects. And I think one of the biggest concerns were actually tra uh, transferring actual objects across realms. And that's why we have this callable boundary and uh, the idea because the objects, they uh, they also like they have identity for the realm they are created, from. so uh, they carry identity. So when you compare uh, objects, you kind of like you can all of, not only leak uh, the other uh, the other realm, but you have identity discontinuity, where you compare like an array from a ray constructor from one realm to an array constructor from the other realm. You can do this with an iframe, you see they are not equal. And this may cause uh, issues that we have today with iframes, and that was 
the limiting that we had. Um, I don't say it's not ideal because the Calumbo boundary today is uh, good enough for us to to have our membrane system and we already see uh, like a big difference in the memory footprint uh, comparing to iframes but I believe we can have uh, extensions to it that will make it even better. Uh, there, is, there are discussions on uh, serialized uh, structuring which are I think are interesting we have things we would love to experiment with transferring uh, shared array buffers because I think it makes no sense today if you have a shared array but you cannot transfer a, sh a shared array buffer. This is a discussion ongoing at CC39. And uh, as soon as you have that, you can use the shared array buffer to actually do the communication uh, by that. It's like, it's very low level, but it, you can use it. Um, and it's still, it's still the same heap, it's the same process. Um, kind of uh, some of the risks are mitigated here and there. There's a lot of things we can improve, but it's uh, sufficient enough to have the whole membranes framework. Like we already have it tested and, and running. We just need, need it to be well, now available. Yeah, um, there is like uh, always a question like on why we need uh, shadow realms and how we actually use it, but there is also like the the, the questions on security and um, and in many other aspects of it. Um, from this point, I think this was uh, this proposal was battle tested. Like it was one of the lo uh, the longest proposals to be on stage two at uh, TC39. Um, if I'm not wrong, I think Shadow Realms uh, advanced to stage three only after seven years uh, being discussed. And, and uh, most of those years very active and uh, a lot of things being addressed here and there. More questions from the chat? Any questions from here? Thanks for the interesting talk. My question would be does Salesforce, Salesforce give any recommendations to customers on what browser versions are to be used? So if you have like for your for your component framework, do you have support limits in terms of Chrome versions too? Uh, no. We do have a uh, uh, we do have a like a compatibility table, but it's pretty more like a supportive of uh, a little bit older versions. Uh, that's why we still support IE11. It's kind of like uh, at the same time, like we provide the support, same time uh, driving with browsers uh, that are so uh, old, such as IE11 uh, gives in a burden. So that's where we find time to uh, stop the support for it. Um, I can show you, I can pick up the, the, the browser uh, compatibility table and uh, I'm not sure if I can do this in parallel because, uh, yes, thank you. Any more questions around here? Yeah, that's why like uh, support for us is not only about uh, like uh, a thing we can only drive because it's how like uh, it's tailored by Salesforce developers. So as a platform, 
uh, Salesforce developers can create, compose their components, use their own com uh, code on the, the, the website. Is, is everything okay? Can you remember the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, okay, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Was basically how you do this chasing of engines, vendors, uh, and also how you deal with expectations of end customers about yeah. the product. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, so as we, uh, like, we are a platform, but it's also a platform that is, uh, most of it is composed by customers. Um, Customers that use like it's like uh, B2B service, where we have uh, a platform and you have the marketplace and things that rely on our frameworks. Um, so, uh, giving support is not only giving support to an end user, and it's not only on our full control uh, to have that support. Let's say uh, when we have like a browser breaking change. Uh, for us, I say that alert, prompt, and confirm. We needed to make sure uh, we not only fix it for ourselves, but we create a plan and or path to our customers to also get ready for, for the change that is coming. Um, so when we have changes like such as uh, we got the Chrome and Firefox version 100, uh, we need to make sure ourselves at Salesforce are ready for it, but also like we create some path for our customers to be aware of that. So it's a contract. Uh, our support is not only a contract with the end user on the web, but uh, like uh, um, Salesforce customers in general and their end users. So it's a chain of support. Okay. Um, is there a technical reason why native shadow DOM wasn't designed to be accessibility? Uh, don't ask this to me, but like people who, <laughs> I think there are more pe people more qualified in this room <laughs> about the design of shadow DOM. Uh, I was not there, uh, but. I think as uh, like all the proposals, you need to identify like uh, step by step all the building blocks for that new uh, feature you're going to be releasing. This is happening with Shadow Realms. There's a lot of things we want to expand already, but we need something that works to make it real for the web. Shadow Dome is a kind of like a new concept uh, for the web. It's very interesting, but there's a lot of th uh, stuff related to it. and. Here on Shadow Dawn, you're creating, like when we talk about accessibility, like with web components, you give the idea of building blocks that you can pick up uh, web components and put them together and they just work. But they have encapsulated uh, DOM. And how do you create these encapsulated DOM trees, like these different uh, encapsulated DOM trees communicate to each other for accessibility? Uh, it's important. It's an important uh, uh, feature like especially for those who need assistive accessibility technologies. But uh, it's, a, it's a feature that don't exist today. So figuring everything now, like it's always good to get step by step. It's also important to always remember like all the fundamental pieces. Uh, that's why like the work keeps on. Yeah, cool. Any questions here? Well, I just have to thank you. Uh, great presentation, Leo. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, uh, thanks, everyone. Nice to have you here. A huge applause for Leo. Uh, I think I learned muitas gracias. Is that correct? Okay. That's correct. <laughs>